Hello everyone and welcome to video number one of uh, mainly covering the AQA GCSE computer science course. Um, I'll be following the specification in all of these videos almost to the T. So I'll be following everything in order that the specification gives and um, topic number one on this specification is named constants, variables and data types. Um, so firstly we've got to look at the difference between data and information. So uh, data is essentially raw unorganized facts that are yet to be processed. So um, let's look at this in the context of buses. So um, here we've just got some random numbers. Obviously I've told you it's about buses but um, imagine that you're just seeing this for the first time. It has no real meaning. It's just random numbers um, that are grouped in, in several in, in uh, one way. Um, but information is, is data that's been processed, organized, structured or presented in a certain context. So now, now this information, you can see it in the bottom left of this table, means a lot more because it's got a title, it's got information alongside it, or I should say data alongside it. So it, it basically, it, now you can know that it's information about a bus route or whatever it is, I just found it randomly. Um, so that's the difference between information and data and that's important that you understand that um, as it's the basis of much of the specification. So now I'm going to look at constants and variables. So a variable is a structure that can hold data um, which is uniquely named by the programmer and the data assigned to it is held until it is changed or the program completes. Therefore the value stored in variables during the program's execution can change. So um, in this video I'll be using Python as an example programming language. If you don't know it or if you're not learning it that's fine but I would expect you to know I would expect you to to have um, gone through the actual uh, programming uh, uh, element to this course. Um, this is more exam based, um, but I'm using it as an example. So um, here I, I set in a variable as 10, then I change it to 15, and when I call this variable, um, the the, um, the value returned is 15, which shows that it can change. So variables allow the data to be changed um, in it. So constants. Um, would be the same as variables um, such as they can hold data and are uniquely named but their values cannot be changed um, unfortunately there's no real way of me showing this an example because in Python um, you, constants don't actually exist um, but they are used in other languages and you're expected to know the difference so constants can't change, variables can. Now let's have a look at data types so a data type is simply a way of classifying um, types of data and what actions they can perform. Um, so the ones you have to know are the um, following integer, boolean, real, character and string. So integers are whole numbers, you should know that from just I guess general knowledge of anything else. Um, a boolean is a, a data type that can have one or two values, either false or true and only those two, which is important you, you know. Um, a real is a decimal number, um, that's not something you, should, you probably know in everyday life, so it's important you recognise. It's also known as a float, but you are. It's, I would find it um, amazing if it actually comes up um, described as a float. Um, so an example of a, a real would be 8.2. A character is a single unit of information, whether it's a number, a letter or, or symbol. Um, the way you determine whether it's a character or an integer is whether it has uh, quotation marks around, um, so a character would have quotation marks around, a number wouldn't. Um, and a string is multiple characters, so hello world for an example. Um, and the purpose of data types is to classify what actions can be performed on what. So, for example, um, if you have a letter A, you can't then multiply that letter by C because you know you know what would that mean that doesn't really mean anything so data types um, basically show they basically mean the programmer can't perform actions that are impossible and it determines what certain functions can can do what um, so you just need to know that and arrays this would be more um, in the structure chapter which I believe is next in the, in the list so I'll go through that next um, in the next video but it does touch on it in this section. So an array is an ordered arrangement of data elements that are accessed by referencing their location within the said array. Um, and look, uh, referencing their location is a process called indexing. So a one-dimensional array stores information in one horizontal direction. So this would be the typical array, um, simply um, three elements or however many in, um, in one array essentially. 
um, so that example. Um, and indexing, an example of indexing here is, um, well this is an example of zero indexing where um, the index numbers start from zero. So when you index this array with zero, it actually means the first object in that array. So for example, it would be A. So if we indexed it with the index number two, that would be C, and one would be B, because it you basically start counting from zero as opposed to one. And um, most languages zero index in this way, but I'm sure if an exam question came upon it, they'd specify um, what kind of index um, is happening. Just just know what zero indexing is, and in Python um, that is what is used. Um, so you also need to know what a two-dimensional array is. Um, you can also have multi-dimensional arrays, but um, you don't you're not required to know that. So they store information horizontally and vertically. So they're a bit more complicated, but it's easy to get a head around. Um, I mean, this way is quite hard to understand just from looking at it. So I'll provide you with a a, a more visual way of uh, looking at it. So um, this two-dimensional array is basically three arrays in one, um, in two different layers. You've got the main array, um, which is simply array number 0, 1, and 2. So the first three letters, the second three, three letters, and the third three letters in the alphabet, that'd be the first array. Then you go deeper and actually go in between the, the individual letters, if that makes sense. As you can see, so if we wanted to access G, we would, we were looking, we're looking for the, the third array in this list, and because it's zero indexing, you would, that'd be 2. And then G is the first number in that individual array, which is 1. So if you, you can look at the table, but I would recommend you practice um, using 1 and 2 dimensional arrays in your chosen programming language, um, just so you can understand and, uh, you know, um, try them out yourself, because it will aid your understanding. Um, so now we're going to look at Boolean expressions. This is the last um, subtopic in this chapter. Um, so these are expressions um, that result in a Boolean value, and of course we know that's either true or false. So um, these expressions are made up of um, these Boolean operators, and there are only three of them, and, or, and not. So you need to learn the meanings. So when and is used, it's used to link, all of these are used to link to uh, objects or data types or variables or whatever uh, together, as you'll see in a second. Um, but and is used and it results in true if and only if both sides are true. Um, or is when it's true if either side is true or both are true and not changes true to false and false to true. That sounds quite complicated, but it's sort of simple logic. And of course, Boolean operators are the basis of logic. Um, uh, and they, these were invented hundreds of years ago before computers were invented at all. And um, these are just the, the basis of what how we view things. Um, and these operators can be used in conjunction with arithmetic operators most commonly. Of these ones I'm sure you will know the meanings of, you would have seen them in everyday life, but the, sing the symbols and how they're used um, you may not know, so I'll learn them, but then of course this is dependent on your programming language. Um, so, so let's have a look at a few examples. So first one quite simply, we're not using any boolean operators, we're just simply using the arithmetic ones. Um, so I've defined the variable as Jim, and if I'm going, I'm, I'm saying if this variable equals Jim, then I'm going to print hello Jim. And the program prints it because the name is clearly Jim. Um, now this is a bit more complicated. It uses the and boolean operator. So I've got two variables, number one and uh, number one and number two. Number one is five, number two is seven. So basically I'm asking the program, uh, if number one and number two are um, both over seven, print both over two. Sorry, both over two, um, and it does because they're obviously both higher. They're both greater than two, um, so obviously they both have to be. Um, if it was or, then for example, we could do number one is one and number two is seven, and that would still result in um, the programming the program successfully uh, um, evaluating this. So it's quite it's, it, it seems quite complicated, um, but you need to, you need to see examples to see it happen. So. Um, I would, if if you don't understand, this, look up it in more detail. I'm only doing the bare minimum here, and more like a sort of revision sort of thing. So um, look at look over it, try it yourself in your programming language. And thank you for watching the video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching.